thank you sir uh, i hope everyone can see my screen yes sir, yes, sir. you just have to go full screen yeah full screen yeah thank you sajan sir uh, so it's a very vast topic i have to cover this in 15 minutes and i guess uh, some of these topics will also be covered in the subsequent talks by dr manish singhal and uh, dr nagender sharma so uh, we will we'll try to uh, cover some uh, cover this topic uh, in 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 the given time so we know that historic historically this uh, 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 stage 4 lung cancer has been a uh, bad disease and uh, like 10 years back 10 12 years back uh, we were seeing uh, we were talking about survivals in months like 9 to 12 months and but with the advent of personalized medicine and available of targets uh, we have been uh, not only been able to improve the quality of life but also uh, overall survival with uh, various drugs that have been available to us <clears throat> so uh, so the non small cell lung cancer it's a very heterogeneous disease uh, and uh, we can we can divide it based on the histology like adenocarcinoma squamous cell carcinoma and then we have different targets that are available to us for targeting like alk her2 egfr braf uh, met and even in even in the uh, egfr mutation uh, subset we have a lot of uh, different mutation uh, uh, that respond differently to uh, different agents so coming to uh, first we'll be covering the most common mutation that is the egfr mutation uh, positive non small cell lung cancer so this is the egfr gene it is found in this egfr activating mutation it is found in 10 to 30% of the non small cell lung cancer patients Seven ninety a mutation here. The relative IC fifty for these first generation TKIs are is very high, so that is why they are resistant. This mutation is quite resistant to this uh, uh, first generation TKIs. While osimertinib it targets it in this mutation uh, even in the affront setting or e in the uh, previously treated setting. So uh, uh, this is the trial on which osimertinib was granted approval in previously treated patients who were exposed to first line TKIs. so the approval was <clears throat> based on aura and aura 2 single arm phase 2 studies of osimertinib uh, in advanced setting uh, the overall response rates in both were uh, 61 and 71% respectively uh, with a median pfs not reached in the aura trial while it was 8.6 in the aura 2 trial uh, th this is the study which is comparing the response rates or the uh, pfs of uh, various generations of tkis so uh, this is the study ctong0901 study uh, so in this uh, uh, this is comparing the pfs median pfs of uh, erlotinib versus gefitinib there was no difference in the pfs there no statistically significant difference in the pfs between the two arms and uh, the same was observed even in the uh, wgog5108 study 
in which the most of the patients were EGFR TK naive. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, if we talk about the Lux Lung 7 study, there also between afatinib and gefitinib, uh, the, the, P, the PFS was 11 months versus 10.9 months. And in the dacometinib study, which is the Archer trial, uh, here the uh, brain metastasis patients were excluded. And uh, here the PFS was 14.7 months versus 9.2 months in the gefitinib arm, uh, which was statistically significant. And this is this is the study of this is the flora study which showed that osimertinib PFS was 18.9 months versus the standard of care allotinib or gefitinib in patient who had uh, mutated uh, uh, EGFR uh, sensitizing mutation. Here also symptomatic brain metastasis patients were excluded, but asymptomatic patients were included. So we have seen consistently PFS of around 9 to 12 months with currently approved EGFR TKI in global studies since IPAS. And uh, this is the efficacy of osimertinib. You can see that it is uh, with a hazard ratio of uh, 0.46. There is a, st a statistically significant difference in the median PFS in the osimertinib arm versus the standard of care. Uh, what was uh, e even the duration of response was quite maintained. Uh, while it was 8.5 months, it was 17.2 months in the osimertinib arm, and uh, so was the response rates also. So. If we look at if we look at the data for subgroup analysis, you can see that almost every every arm is favoring osimertinib compared to uh, gefitinib and lotinib, whether it was age of uh, racial smoking history, baseline CNS metastasis or not, or uh, the type of mutation. In every arm, there is a uh, statistically uh, these data was favoring uh, osimertinib. We all know about these uh, common side effects with uh, gefitinib. We all know that afatinib and dacometinib, these are second generation TKIs. And there is slight tolerability issues. Uh, probably the tolerability issues with these two drugs are much more as compared to gefitinib and afatinib. And particularly the diarrhea is quite troubling for most of us clinicians in dacometinib. Even afatinib causes a lot of diarrhea with a grade three, grade four adverse events rated almost 49%. Similarly in dacometinib also, 63% uh, adverse events are, severe adverse events are seen. While uh, the side effect profile is slightly more manageable for osimertinib, erlotinib, and gefitinib. So uh, we know that a lot of these patients, lung cancer patients who are EGFR mutated, they have a propensity for brain metastasis. And uh, 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 this is probably because the penetra penetrability of these drugs uh, through the blood brain barrier is less. So uh, uh, the, the disease is being probably being exposed to the sub-therapeutic level of uh, EGFR TKIs that we are giving. So in, in these uh, 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 mouse studies, uh, we have seen that uh, osimertinib has probably the highest brain to plasma uh, concentration ratio. So based on that, uh, this, is, this is the uh, data for from flora. You can see that uh, in osimertinib, CNS response was 64%. This is the waterfall plot showing CNS response of 64% versus 45% reduction in the CNS target lesion in the other arm. Uh, you can see that CNS progression uh, was also much less in osimertinib arm as compared to the EGFR TKI comparator and progression due to new CNS lesion was also less. So fewer patients, they progress CNS progression and uh, fewer patients progress due to new CNS lesion with osimertinib treatment compared to EGFR TKI. Although, uh, uh, in the Archer study, dacometinib has not shown uh, the, the symptomatic brain metastasis patients were excluded. But in subsequent smaller studies, uh, dacometinib has shown uh, uh, response even in the CNS. So this is the this is the data for uh, now we have data for overall survival also available. This was published in NEJM. Here the uh, median overall survival was 38.6 months versus 31.8 months in this standard comparator EGFR TKI arm. So uh, this is the first uh, this is the first drug which has shown uh, overall survival benefit compared to allotinib gefitinib uh, uh, in EGFR sensitizing mutation population. So this is the summary. So uh, these third generation EGFR TKIs they also they significantly pro uh, give longer PFS and with osimertinib we we see the OS benefit also and osimertinib is the only EGFR TKI to report intracranial efficacy even dacometinib's efficacy is there. And this is osimertinib is quite well tolerated at its recommended dose of 80 mg. Adverse events leading to dose reduction of the second generation TKIs are more frequent. Uh, 
Osimertinib was also highly effective in patients who were harboring uncommon EGFR mutation. And uh, seven out of 10 patients who start on first or second generation EGFR TKI will not be able to receive the benefit of best drug in the second line because some of them progress too fast. And by the time they present to you, they are probably not in a condition to treat. So <coughs> now treatment based on ALK translocation. So uh, ALK, ALK is probably uh, the number of drugs that have come up in, uh, in the treatment of ALK uh, uh, translocation. They are, they are much more now uh, as compared to EGFR. And uh, although the frequency is lesser as compared to the EGFR mutation, so a total of 4% overall with 33% patients who are EGFR ne negative, never, never smokers, with, of course, adenocarcinoma or adenosquamous carcinomas. Uh, several ALK variants are identified and it, it is detected by FISH or ALK IHC. So, so this is the first trial. This is the Profile 1014 study. It was a phase three trial of ALK positive patients with non squamous NSCLC with no prior systemic treatment. This was this is what, what had led to the approval of crizotinib as compared to chemo, chemotherapy. Median PFS was improved uh, uh, with a hazard ratio of 0.45 and overall response rates was also higher in, in crizotinib. Uh, if we talk about the other, other trials, this is the ASCENT study. ASCENT study, uh, uh, it included various group. Uh, it included the seretinib. Uh, then we had electinib. Electinib initially it was uh, uh, tested in the second line study in the previously in the patients who had been previously exposed to crizotinib. And then with J Alex and Alex trial, it, it, its approval was uh, uh, there for patients in the first line also. Then we have study for brigatinib and now uh, lorlatinib also. We have data for first line. So uh, this is the this is the data for seretinib. So seretinib uh, uh, and electinib, it was approved for patients with ALK positive metastatic non-small cell lung cancer with disease progression on or who are intolerant to crizotinib based on the excellent response rates that were achieved with both the drugs. Uh, so this is the JLX trial. JLX trial showed that uh, uh, the, as compared to crizotinib, uh, in, in patients who were uh, treatment naive, the median PFS was not reached as compared to 10.2 months with an excellent T value and a hazard ratio of 0.34. Uh, another, uh, we know that uh, most of the ALK positive patients, uh, they tend to have a higher propensity to develop uh, uh, brain metastasis. In fact, a lot of patients do present with baseline brain metastasis. And uh, particularly with the second and the third generation TKIs, uh, these, these, these drugs have excellent intracranial efficacy. And uh, with the new data for lorlatinib, mentioning that almost 80% uh, intracranial response rates are seen in patients who are exposed to lorlatinib. Uh, so both these uh, second generation, this electinib and brigatinib, they, uh, electinib and lorlatinib, they have excellent CNS response. And even with uh, seretinib, you, uh, you, can, you can achieve good amount of intracranial response, even in patients who are pre-treated or they are uh, treatment naive. You can see that uh, in previously treated patients, the uh, uh, response rates of around 40% are seen, uh, intracranial response rate, while it was around 60% in patients who had, uh, who were not previously treated. So with, with electinib, it is around 75%. So this is an excellent number because uh, CNS metastasis is often uh, the cause of a lot of morbidity. So this is the, uh, this is the summary that we should generally be treating the patients who have ALK mutation positive with uh, 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 second and second or third, third generation ALK TKI in the first line uh, because of the excellent response rates, excellent PFS, as well as intracranial responses. So ROS1 fusion, so this is also uh, uh, another fusion which can be detected by FISH or uh, ROS PCR or IHC. Uh, it, is, it is one of the less common mutation. It is seen in around 1.2 to 1.7% of the patients. Usually, uh, it's just like ALK in seen in never smoker adenocarcinomas with a high grade histology. Uh, Crizotinib is active in this drug uh, in in this mut mutation. Uh, so you can see that uh, uh, this is the trial in which uh, it was seen that 72% uh, overall response rates were there with a median PFS of 19.2 months. Based on this, crizotinib was used for treatment of patients with ROS1 fusion. So now coming to the more rarer histologies like uh, uh this is we have we have now uh treatment available for BRAF b600e mutation uh, either vemurafenib dabrafenib or combination of dabrafenib tramptenib now 
high level met amplification or met exon 14 skipping mutation we can we can try crizotinib but now we have data available for capmatinib with an excellent response rates and duration of response rate re rearrangements cabozantinib has been tried and with her two mutation trastuzumab and afatinib have, have has been recommended coming to the met mutation the met exon 14 mutation it is it is a mutation associated with quite poorer prognosis it is associated with advanced age and compared to patients who do not have met mutation they are associated with poorer prognosis and poorer response to even chemotherapy uh, uh, our non small cell lung cancer patients so uh, one minute to conclude please okay I'll, I'll just be skipping this is the response to the re response to the therapy so this is the most recent trial about capmatinib for exon uh, med 14 skipping mutation uh, this included various group of patients and the response rates was around 41 percent patients who were previously treated and there was one subgroup where 62 percent response rates were seen in uh, 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 treatment naive patients for small cell lung cancer you can see that overall response rates of 63% and disease control rate of 75% is seen with double patients who were given with just monotherapy uh, response rates of around 44% see the median of seven months and a duration of response of eight months for ntrk rearrangement we had the paper uh, there is an excellent response seen by the end of uh, uh, six months so these are all the mutations that are available to us for targeting and uh, this is opened a lot of ways for personalized patients who have non-metastatic cell lung cancer Thank